In a busy lab in Cambridge, scientists are growing something that could help find treatments for two devastating and related brain disorders, motor neurone disease and frontotemporal dementia. These are human mini-brains. These mini-brains, they're not conscious, they're not thinking, but they've been grown from the cells of people with motor neurone disease. So the DNA has the same errors, and they're actually mimicking how their brains would have grown in the womb. That allows them to study how the disease may start, long before symptoms develop. By feeding them mini-brains with vitamins and proteins every day, and slicing them up so the nutrients go in better, they've managed to keep them growing longer than ever. So Nelly, I've got this image of you coming in every day during lockdown, feeding these mini brains with nutrients, and the big breakthrough for you guys was keeping them growing for nearly a year, wasn't it? Why was that so significant? We are uh, growing them for so long because that lets the cells mature longer and we are able to look at the start or the development of the disease for a longer time. Mini organs or organoids can also be used to try different drugs out, reducing the need to test on animals or humans. And because they use your personal cells, it could one day tell scientists which drugs work best for you. We are all different and so are our responses to medications as well. For instance, we can take cells from an individual patient and grow organs from them, which would mimic their own brain and their own disease, essentially. So we can test drugs on them and see what combination of drugs or single drugs are more suitable for their own disease. And presumably it's a lot safer testing drugs on, the, on an organoid than on the actual person. That's right. It's not only safer, but uh, you can test drugs in combination. You can test multiple um, drugs at the same time, and it's a much more rapid process. Many human organs, including the liver, gut and heart, can now be grown as organoids. They're becoming an important tool for understanding and treating disease. Richard Westcott, BBC News, Cambridge.